On a beautiful summer day, a busload of adventurers, many from thousands of miles away, arrive at a trailhead near the Panther River on the east slope of the Rocky Mountains. They're about to join in one of the longest traditions in mountain trail riding, the Order of the Trail Riders of the Canadian Rockies, established in 1923. Meanwhile, 27 saddle horses, trail riding professionals, wait to meet their charges. The riders, many of them inexperienced, who the horses must take to the backcountry and return unharmed. Brownie Aikman, please. Is your horse there? Jason? Roger Dickinson. Yes. And Bubba? Okay. What's, his, what's his name? Bubba. Bubba, that's perfect for me. Um, I always enjoyed horses, even though last year I had a kind of a scary experience in Florida where I got thrown. It's my first time on since I, that happened. I consider it a little bit more back to nature in, in one sense. It's how, how people discovered the Rockies in the first place. It's how the West was won, I guess. <laughs> Worn pretty good. I enjoy horses because I was always one of those little kids that loved horses, but was never around them, other than reading every book. And so I never really had a real experience to speak of growing up. The trail riding horse is not briefed on the personalities and abilities of the people who ride them. They learn on the job, beginning the moment the horse and rider meet. That's when the horses feel in their muscles what level of skill and balance, fear or pure excitement, they'll soon be dealing with. Knee McIntyre. Get Billy. I got him back. How's that for guessing, huh? Oh, I got him back. I'm so excited. I had him last year. It was my first. It was my first ride last year, and I got this sweet little baby. I got him back. I'm so excited. They all seem pretty much the same. Uh, nice and timid. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be flying off the saddle or anything. At least I hope not. His name is Billy. I have a little piece of hair in my office that I hang up on my uh, at this bulletin board right next to my desk. And I took a little bit of his tail last year and hung it right up there to remind me of I'm uh, right a, a clinical social worker and I'm really okay. stressed at work. So yeah. occasionally when things really get to me, I look at that little piece right of hair here. and I think, yes, there are That's better right. things in this world. So <laughs> everybody please get on their horses. And make sure your stirrups feel comfortable, that they're even, side to side. Left like this, go left. Right to the right. Yeah. Pull back to stop. And if you pull back too hard, it's reverse gear. You don't need that. When you think about it, this is an amazing experience. One minute you're an urbanite riding a bus. Next minute, you're climbing on a horse and heading into the mountains. About to ford rivers and pick your way up narrow trails. None of it would be possible except for the foolproof nature of the trail riding horse. The guest end of a trail ride is one thing. The outfitting end is quite another. As the riders headed off down the trail, outfitter Kevin Stanton and his crew were busy loading luggage and supplies onto pack horses. You gotta prepare the horses, prepare the equipment, organize the food. Uh... The horses used by the trail riders are also supplied by Kevin Stanton. And he told us some of the techniques he uses to achieve the kind of bomb-proof horse. The packing and has been a big part of that. We have people come back, ask for the same horses year after year, and, and uh, we do our best to give it back to them because obviously they enjoyed it. So we try to keep our horses around. You know, some of our horses are 35 years old. As long as they're safe and they don't stumble, well, we, we keep them around. <laughs> 